Okay, so hello again. It's been a few days, as you can see, there is the gap here. It wasn't be here before, as you, well, it's been only a few minutes for you, so... The gap wasn't there, uh, because apparently this uh, turbine assembly is pressed onto the shaft. So, you need to use uh, some sort of gear puller to, well, to press it out. Uh, a few problems with that arose, actually forced me to search YouTube and find the channels that I have already seen, apparently, just didn't remember. So, my normal gear puller is just like this, well, if you do it like this, you can actually put them in, but no, <laughs> it's not going to work. So, I had to make new jaws, and also, so you understand where am I pulling. So, uh, well. okay, so, no. It's actually marked, so I put it exactly in the same uh, position that I took it out from, but there is actually a groove right here. And you have to put the jaws on the groove and press in the center here. Uh, you have to press uh, far enough, so actually the bolts from the assembly itself, so the bolt was, uh, I think it was here somewhere. They fit perfectly. It's the same size as the... So, there was this uh, bolt with a nut, oh, the opposite side. So the bolt with a nut is the same size. So, you can actually uh, screw it down there. Screw it until the end so the threads don't get stripped when you're pressing on it. So, you just screw it until the limit. And try to use uh, my shitworthy attempt to make the puller. As you can see, it's uh, machined down, so there's the lip here, which is approximately 1.5 uh, millimeters, and you can use it to grab that uh, thing. The problem is, this is a two-part puller. So let me show you how it works first. So actually, I had a problem with finding materials, because I don't want to order them. And there is the dude on YouTube called Glasslinger. He has a video on refurbishing similar pump. I think even probably the same pump. And he has a really interesting uh, way of uh, how he made the puller. He made it from the whole pipe. He machined it really precisely, drilled the hole, and then made an assembly so it's not uh, separate. So he basically he basically screwed the plank on top, so these two, they're always on the same distance. And you can change them just a little bit by screwing the bolt inside. I sort of wanted to repeat that, but first I didn't have the materials, and second, I want to use this puller for other stuff, or other pumps even. So I wanted to be, the be a multi-purpose one. So how I made it? Uh, just went, bolt, bought a large steel bolt, machined everything off. So this is essentially a tube. You drill it inside. So the diameter of this one has to be smaller than the diameter of the hole. Then you just split it with a bun, so that's it. You grind everything to perfection here. Done. Oh yeah. Also I didn't have to I didn't have time to find good nuts here and good bolts. So it's just like shittily attached, it's fine, it's not really strongly pressed on. So, just made a hole in there, that's it. <clears throat> so I can, I can even remove one actually, so, yeah. So, I just made a hole like this. Ground, ground it down a bit, hole in the center, and the lip. And it's done. So, now I will try to finish pressing out. Actually, I started pressing out by myself, because first I wasn't sure that it would work. Second, I really wanted to concentrate on that, because, well, I just don't want to fuck it up. That, that's how it is. Like, when you really need to concentrate on something, you better just do it off YouTube. <laughs> so, the trick here is, so, when you put it in, yeah, I'm going to move a bit. Uh, 
So when you put it in, first you need to click both of them into the groove, which is well, which is somewhere down there. Okay, the right one clicked, and this is not enough. The left one. Oh yeah. Oh, I I went too deep. So yeah. It's uh, it was easier when I wasn't filming. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the trick to hold them separate is just to slide your pincet or whatever in here, and it will help you a bit. So now we have all of them. Then you can press this way and just screw it in to press it upwards a bit and it separates uh, pretty easily the thing is in the beginning it was quite stuck so I had to just uh, grab it like this to hold it together and turn it using a screwdriver so and turn it using a screwdriver like this but now it's not necessary so it just it just separates like this. And I don't really need this anymore. So the pincet starts to get in the way. So I will just, I uh, guess I will have to lift it up a bit like this. And well, I think the, it's separated. So now I can just, uh, yeah can just press it out. Problem is that I need to remove the bolt first. <laughs> okay, so I remove the bolt. Ah, there was the washer here. Don't lose the washer. Here you go. And then you just remove it completely by lifting. <laughs> and here it is. Uh, turbine assembly. Keep it really carefully. <laughs> if you bend one of the blades, well, the game is over. <clears throat> so you will, will not be putting the pump back together again anytime soon. Okay, now we can get closer. So, yeah. I will work on the nuts, but yeah. Now I can use it to pull bearings from the inside, which is good really small bearings. Now I have to get a case for this. <laughs> it was actually pretty shit worthy attempt to make a gear puller, so I'm pretty sure you can do better. I just used what I had with with machining tools that I had, so just use it as a bad example <laughs> of, how, of how you can do it in a desert, but not as the working prot well, not as a <laughs> just don't copy it, that's what I'm saying. So, next uh, step the motor is down here. Actually, the I was uh, looking how to remove the, the turbine assembly, and you should really check the dude called Glasslinger. This video is like nine years old or something. It's called uh, replacing bearings in uh, turbo molecular molecular vacuum pump. Do the school. He has, uh, I think, a PVD, so phys physical vapor deposition machine, and he was uh, making a pump for it. But uh, mostly he does uh, radio repair. So I guess we're not really connected uh, as much. So yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, by the way, uh, before I forget, I have marked uh, the shaft. Before the weight marks on top just disappear, I will, I will mark it a bit more. Yeah, like this. And the same inside uh, of 
of the bearing of the vacuum pump vacuum I'm just uh, saying words don't mind it well now you have to remove uh, three bearings I think ah oh, three bolts I was <laughs> I just came back from machine shop. I was like trying to do it for I don't know, three hours or so. It was fine, but it's a bit uh, hard to switch your mind off uh, loud machines to talking on the video. Well, everything comes with practice, I guess. Also, I couldn't really film it in there because, well, the machine shop actually is a neighboring lab and, well, it would be too intrusive of me to film inside. So, just no filming for you. Yeah, if you remove it, uh, yes, also, the, the dude, the glass linger, reminded me something. See, the, there is an o-ring here. It's really hard to buy <laughs> if you if you lose it or something so always keep a good look after it uh, after that i think there is a bigger bigger o-ring here which you have to actually remove put it there okay let's go to the side and next I don't really... oh yeah, here. This is the motor itself, so... Okay. Here we go. And I think now... Yes, so... This is the rotor of the motor. Oh yeah, and this, the bottom bearing. The bottom bearing is shot. There is no way you're doing anything about it. So I'm thinking about separating the video in two parts. In the first, we will just take it apart. In the second one, well, we'll do something about it <laughs> and actually in the inside you can see there is uh, basically nothing in so that's it this is the motor assembly now oh, also i will show the pin out of this connector later when we will be starting the motor or well actually you can google it down it's uh, mentioned in the schematics Oh, also, there is the O-ring here, which is uh, insulating the bearing against uh, against this. So, also keep it uh, is as intact as possible. Oh yeah, and the last one. There is one more small, really small O-ring here to keep the oil circulating inside the bearings. Really important, don't lose it. Okay. Here you go. Good luck. Uh, visit the dude, Glasslinger. Uh, I will archive his video as well on my local computer. So if you see this video but you cannot find him, just message me. And we'll think, we will think of something. Okay, bye bye. So I was actually uh, going to end video here, but I remembered uh, one more thing. More like I noticed one more thing, that this is still not disassembled completely. I'd like to do it. Uh, problem is that when you're touching it, it's really easy to remove this uh, marks. So just be careful about it. They're not really important. Like everything is uh, self-balanced with and without turbine, but just to be sure. So uh, the way to pull it apart is. Uh, Pretty simple, I guess. So, you remove this uh, spreader, and there is uh, one more bearing here. 
and the pressure is not that much because it's o-ring sealed here so there's no problem <coughs> you can just pull it with your hands here just put this back put it somewhere here you're done, you're done. Uh, for now at least uh, so this is also pretty easy this bearing uh, well the top one it's pretty good so there's just a bit of play probably I will change it but probably not we will see but this one yeah sounds like shit and come on, here see the stoppers are getting out this is how they're supposed to look and this one is shot so to remove it I don't actually know I think we will need the puller <laughs> so it's good that I bought one well, always good to have a gear puller because bearings well <laughs> They sit tight, and with age, you know, they sit tighter. So, okay. I will. I'm just assembling the. I'm just assembling the puller actually. So, nothing too important about it. So, pretty easy. Just. Uh, Randomly put it, just randomly put it in. Remember the position. Okay. And probably good. Then we have to pull this one out. It's not going to take that much force, but still. Okay. Oh, it's perfect. Oh, more or less. The problem here will be to center it on the on the axis. Yeah. I wonder if this is removable actually. Looks like it is. See, like it has a it has a hole in the center, and I really don't want to damage it. Hmm. What do we do? Oh yeah, I think the hole goes. The hole actually goes all the way through, so the oil can cycle inside the bearing. Yeah. So what do I do here? That's a pretty interesting question. A question I don't want to ask myself. Well, first, uh, nah, I don't think I can do anything about it at this point. So I will just press it lightly. If it if it refuses, I will think about convincing it to move but for now this is fiddly okay no it just moves off off center <laughs> this is uh, not good what else can we do? We can... We can push it somehow. We can pull it from this side. Hmm. Yeah. This would be harder. Nah, I don't think it's possible. Hmm. 
Hmm. I will think of something. Just give me a sec. Well, it's been literally a few seconds. I found this on the table. Yeah, come on, focus. So, not to press on the center. I will just do like this and press in here. Center is deep. It's not going to get damaged in this ring. Well, the area of contact is bigger, so we will hope that it will somehow work out. Okay. Oh yeah, way easier to center as well. Yeah, but to turn this one, I will have to take the driver. Okay. Am I doing something wrong? Usually it's not supposed to take that much force. But well, right now it does. Huh. I don't like that it does that. Let's try again. But more gently. Sorry for the noise. Uh, <laughs> probably I will have to cut this out because it's just too loud. And, well, you cannot really see what I'm doing because I'm trying to put it in the upright position. So the gravity helps me a bit. Okay. Try number two. <laughs> nope. It really doesn't want to get out. Is there a stopper ring or something? I thought that uh, this slip here is a stop ring, but no, actually both of the bearings they have it and it doesn't seem to be, it does. It seems to be a part of the bearing, like this one. <clears throat> there is a groove for for something like a stop ring right here, but no, it has none. Hmm, oh well. Hmm. Also the metal, the metal here is not damaged, so I will probably just uh, use unreasonable force on it, because, well, because why not? Um, at least semi unreasonable force. So if you hold it like this, you can do like that. And probably to center it, I would have to let go slightly and then push again. Let's try a different driver. Oops. Ah. Okay. My bad. We're not centering it correctly. See, like with the angle of this uh, jaws, it's quite hard to. They're the same, by the way, here and there. It's quite hard to... to grip, because the... 
opening here opening here is a bit uh, a bit small but well I'm doing something wrong. Uh, <laughs> most probably I'm doing something wrong. Okay, I had a thought. I checked the uh, Glasslinger's video again, and uh, well, the way apparently is just to pull it. So I started already, and <laughs> it's separating already. So. Yeah, uh, but in his video, he pulled it absolutely effortlessly, like zero effort, effort whatsoever. He did it like with one finger. So <laughs> probably my one is really busted. <laughs> yeah, it's getting out. <laughs> yeah. And now I cannot even cannot even push it just by itself. I'll have to use something else. So yeah, this is uh, pretty straightforward, I guess. It took surprising amount of force to put it up, to pull it out. Oh yeah, and I see the score score marks here. <laughs> yeah, really unusual, I would say. Not really unusual, but how do I say it? <laughs> Unexpected for me. I expected it to be. A bit more delicate job. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, so and I wish I could use something to center it a bit. A bolt? Yeah, probably a bolt would do. So this is what you can do. These bolts they have uh on one side and just a bit of indent on the other so you can just sort of uh, squeeze it in and it will self center mm. also this is just a general purpose gear puller and uh, well the glass linger did it with uh, with a special built tube puller okay I hope it will be fine. See? If it goes like this, you can bend the shaft, so just don't force it in this direction. Yeah, I guess that's the really a benefit of using specialized tools. Well, it's a specialized, but he built it himself. I okay, I got distracted a bit. And yeah, some people came and talked to me. So I found a place, piece of uh, vacuum tubing here. I guess I will try to use that. Since we have moved the bearing already slightly, it should just hold, I think. I mean the piece of tubing. Okay, yes, it went free, just push it until the end, and we're done. Okay, this is perfect. I'll just remove the tubing. This is oil pump, by the way. Come on, focus, focus. It doesn't focus, wait. Okay, now it's focused. So this is the oil pump, this cone. Actually oil runs up on it and goes into the bearing. 
and goes all the way up the motor. So yeah, this is a bit scored, so I will have to polish it later, but it's not a big deal. Also score marks from the bearing, yeah. Just uh, polish the bottom lightly, that will be fine. Okay, and for the bearing itself, well, <laughs> I think you can already see in here that it's not a bearing anymore. Okay, that's it. Bye bye. See you in the next episode when I order a new bearing. We'll put it together and try spinning it. Okay. Bye bye.